Hello and welcome to lecture 33 of Math 101B03. So in today's lecture, we're going to take a slight detour and jump to Appendix 5 in your textbook, and we're going to introduce uh, the complex numbers. So that's actually our goal for today, is to introduce the properties of these numbers. And as part of today's lecture, I'll also explain why we might be interested in these numbers in connection to linear algebra. So depending upon your mathematical background, some of this may just be review. For some of you, this may be new stuff. That's okay. We're going to build it up from the ground up. And uh, we'll use this material in lecture 34 when we start looking at uh, matrices whose eigenvalues and eigenvectors contain complex numbers. Okay, I'll make my face disappear here. And we'll first kind of talk about what is a complex number and what is its connection to linear algebra. Okay, so we first start with kind of a fact from calculus that x squared equals negative one has no root because whenever you take a number, a real number and you square it, you either get zero or a positive number, right? So another one way of saying this, when you say you have no real root, that means that there's no solution in the real numbers. Now, on the other hand, we want to have a solution to this. We want to talk about when we do have a solution to this equation. So one of the great insights of mathematics, I can't remember exactly when this was, 1700s or so, was that, well, we could actually represent the root of this uh, equation by i. We could have picked a different letter, but they use i and i represents the square root of negative one. And of course, this is called the imaginary number. And more importantly, i is the solution, right? So i is a solution to the first equation, because if I look at i squared, what I'm doing is I'm taking negative one squared, and then I'm squaring it, and remember, square roots and squares, they kill, kill each other, uh, or cancel each other out, so I get minus 1. So this is called the imaginary number. So I is the imaginary number. And a complex number, then, is any number that's of the form a plus bi, with a and b being real numbers. Okay, so as an example of this. Let me give uh, some examples. So examples of complex numbers would be something like 3 plus 2i, or we could have 3 minus 2i, or we could have 4i. And you can also think of the regular numbers as complex numbers because 17 is the same thing as 17 plus 0i. So these are all examples of complex numbers. And just like what we have a notation for the real numbers, we use capital R for the complex numbers. We use capital C in this bold face way. And this is the set of all complex numbers where A and B are real numbers. Okay, so C is going to be the set of all our complex numbers. And we have a little cartoon here. Hopefully you're laughing. Uh, Ah, there we go, about uh, complex numbers. Now, I've already mentioned this and why we might be interested in this. So our motivation comes from the fact that when you're dealing with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you're, you're going to bump up into complex numbers, right? And you're gonna, it's going to come here from complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And let me just give you a simple example to show you that the complex numbers do are going to get, show up in our discussion of eigenvalues. So here we have a two by two matrix, uh, negative one, negative five, four, and seven. And say I okay, ask you to find the eigenvalues of of my ma of my matrix. So you do the regular process. You look at the matrix A minus lambda I two because we're in a two by two matrix, and I've already set up the uh, determinant. And so let's finish calculating it. So we have negative one minus lambda times seven minus lambda minus negative 20. And let's expand this out. So we have lambda squared. Uh, we should end up with see, a positive lambda, so a minus six lambda. And then see, I have a minus seven plus 20 gives me plus 13. And now I want to set this equal to zero, right? I want to 
take the characteristic equation and set it, and I need to find its root. So I have a quadratic equation. We know how to solve for quadratic equations. We have our famous quadratic formula. So we know that lambda is equal to 6 plus or minus minus 6 squared minus 4 times 13 all over 2. And inside of here, what we end up with is 6 plus or minus uh, 36 minus 52 all over 2. And then we could simplify this a bit. We get 6 plus or minus negative 16 over 2. Now, normally in calculus, if you were to get this far, you would, you would stop and say, well, there's no roots on the end of the story. But now that we're allowing complex numbers, we can actually solve for this. And let me just do a different one more step right here. So we have 6 plus or minus, and you can break it up into root 16 times negative 1. Or sorry, root 16 times root of negative 1 all over 2. So this gives me 6 plus or minus 4 i over 2. And then we can divide each term by 2. So we get 3 plus or minus 2i. So what we have here is the eigenvalues are complex numbers. So the eigenvalues are lambda 1, which is 3 plus 2i, and lambda 2, which is 3 minus 2i. And just to kind of recap here, what, I, what I've said a couple times, I put it written it out here in this red sentence, is that complex numbers will show up naturally. So when you're looking at the characteristic equation, this equation is a polynomial of degree n in lambda. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says that they will have exactly n roots counting multiplicity if we allow complex numbers. So when you take a polynomial at random, you are, probably will find complex numbers. So it's important that we understand how complex numbers work. And hence, that's kind of why we're going to spend some time talking about how to work with complex numbers. So that's going to be the next part of today's lecture. I'll take a brief pause and then set everything up for the next part.